So we are doing a series on how to heal aspects of our human behavior so that we can express more of our divinity, right? So Cindy started it off on uh, the first week on anger. And we all know what anger is. Anger occurs when we don't get what we want. <laughs> and, we get, <laughs> and we get caught up in our will. And then we create this big energy and nobody hears what we say or, or what we want anyways because we just see this energy. And so how to overcome that is that we now align our will with God's will in creating a space where there can be resolution. Right? Simple. Yes, you all have been doing that? <laughs> and then last week, Cindy talked about pain. And pain is a disruption of our energy flow. And it's when our creation is not in harmony with our spirit. And we start asking all these questions about why is this happening and trying to figure out and try and understand. And it creates all this confusion about why all this stuff is happening. And so to overcome that, we need to stop worrying about all the details of everything and just claim what we want for ourselves. Remember it was, I now claim my space and love. I now claim my space and love. And that gets the energy moving. All these human behaviors that we have are, are limit our flow in our body and our energy. So this week we're going to be talking about resentment. And so resentment is a feeling of indignant displeasure or persistent ill will at something or someone regarded as wrong. It's a feeling or sense of being treated unfairly, injured, or offended. <laughs> and when we feel offended, we feel like our value has been attacked. We've been attacked. So our focus then goes on blaming the person or situation for the conditions in our life. And it freezes that event in a moment in time. So we perceive somebody as treating us unfairly. And so now we have resentment towards them. Resent comes from the French word resentir. Re meaning again and sent to feel. So in resentment, we get to keep feeling this over and over and over again. And it may go through years of feeling that, but a lot of times we're not even aware that we have it. Most of the time, our resentment is caused by uh, somebody that's close to us that wrongs us in some way or seems to wrong us in some way. And then that causes a distance between you and the people that you once cared about, right? Um, it's like, okay, I can't go there anymore. We can't go there anymore. And then we start avoiding people, places, situations, because, hmm, I can't go there anymore. Or if it's, we have resentment to people that we have to deal with every day, it causes that emotional distance. That emotional distance, um, and there becomes this cold energy. You know, like in anger, it's the hot energy and volatile. Resentment is cool, you know? It's underlying, it's, it's the energy that just goes like that. Then we have, there's also the resentment um, for those who seem to hurt people that we like and love if someone treats somebody that we love badly, then we go, well, I don't like you either, and I'm not going to be around you. And do we do that? I mean, maybe, hopefully we don't, but maybe we do. <laughs> so this is how it works. So say my friend David here, he's a good friend of mine, and we say we work together and we do a lot of things together, and he's an artist, and he's given me his art, and he's going to open an art studio, and for some reason, David said something that upset me. I felt I was attacked. Maybe he didn't value what I was saying, or just, I just, just couldn't get over it. And so then the first thing I would do would be unfriend him on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
might give away the art that he gave to me. And then I might snicker it, because he has art all over in all these buildings in Atlanta. And I might just snicker at something that he might have done. And I might secretly hope that nobody shows up to his opening. Well, there you go. And if I'm with him, if I still have to deal in relationship with him, I would be giving him the cold shoulder. I would deal with him, but I would be guarded, and I would just give enough energy to get done what we need to get done, but I would be sending this cool energy towards him. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. <laughs> so, and then after a while, I might, if somebody asked me about David, I might go, It doesn't matter, David. You know, you kind of go, eh. I don't talk to him anymore. Eh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I saw this picture to explain uh, resentment. It's kind of cat-like. You know how indignant, indignant your cat can be? They sit there and they look at you and they can stare right through you and you call them and they look away. <laughs> and they're so cool like you just don't matter. <laughs> but then they'll give you a little dig. They'll give you that <laughs> little cat's wife. Just to remind you that I didn't like what you did. You didn't give me the wet food I liked. <laughs> so we have that coolness with a little jab. Coolness with a little jab. All right. So in our body, our natural state of our body is flow. And all these behaviors create constriction in our body. So when I'm trying not to send energy to David because I really loved him, and he was my best friend, I have to now, I'm constricting this energy of who I am, and I'm just going to send back a little cool energy. You see? So there's no light now emanating from that part in my body that I'm holding that resentment towards David. It's creating that block. So, as metaphysicians, um, in my mind, I know that there's no really such thing that someone could really hurt or harm me because it's just a result of my energy interacting with their energy and I have to have a thread of energy that's in common with what's happened in order for it to happen to me, right? Mm -hmm. Attraction, our energies, there's something vibrating in me that would attract that. And so, as metaphysicians, we try and mental through that, and we're always doing our due diligence and saying, why did that happen? What was in, was, what's within me that's creating that? And so we do that. So in preparing the service, I thought, I don't, I've done a lot of work. I don't really have any resentments toward anybody. And I thought, that's just really, I, I just don't. But I certainly grew up living amongst resentments. And so... I, I remember that when I was a child, um, my family, my dad came from a large family of, of six children, and um, all my uncles and aunts lived in the same area, and we lived in a four-family apartment building. And my grandmother owned it, and it was for family to live there or people that maybe couldn't afford to live anywhere. But it was not to make money. It was just so family could be there and other people could live there if they needed. And so when she passed, she divvied it up and each uh, uncle or aunt got an apartment. And of course my dad got the, apart the apartment that we lived in. And another uncle got another apartment. And now my dad had always worked in the same job for 45 years in a men's clothing. Uh, store and my uncle Chet um, was in real estate and he owned different business. He had a convenience store and and um, a sandwich shop and he was always creating new things. So there's a little difference in energy. And he, Uncle Chet, wanted to raise the rates and start making money. Of course, he had seven kids. And in my family, there was just 
my brother and myself. And my brother is 10 years older than me. And everyone says, when I say I have a brother, they go, I'm shocked. It doesn't seem like you have a brother. And I go, oh, we're just different consciousness. And I'm like, oh, but I'm really surprised you have a brother. Yeah, yeah, he's in Florida. Yeah, he's 10 years older than me. Yeah, I never see him. No big deal. Didn't think it had any effect on me. And so um, there became this resentment between my dad and my uncle, um, where he wanted to raise the rights, my dad did not. And so now we couldn't talk to my uncle, and I couldn't hang around with his kids, and so now everyone had to not act how we were acting. Um, but my cousin who I was, could come to my house, but we couldn't go to his house. So then there's all these conditions about how you can relate now to this, your family. This is your family. Um, so at, I was about 13, and about that time my brother left and moved to Florida. Um, and he's only probably been back twice in 35 years. So, after years of not really communicating with him, we probably visited him a couple times in Florida and, and different things. He's just not really one to stay in contact with people. Um, I've had to call him because my mom has had lots of surgeries and I've had to let him know what was going on. And so when I called him, meanwhile, all my my dad has passed on my aunts and uncles except for that Uncle Chet. And now my mom is living with my Uncle Chet. And there had been healing from my Uncle Chet and my aunt, and my parents were always with my Uncle Chet and my Aunt Peggy. They always went and visited, they went to events together, so whatever the rift was, they healed, and then it was their family again. So now my mom was living with my uncle. and. Um, so when I called my brother, all he could talk about was blaming Uncle Chet for my mom's condition and saying all kinds of nasty things about him and that he was bad to daddy and gave daddy ulcers and daddy was a good man. I said, yes, yes, daddy was a good man. Yes, no, Uncle Chet didn't give daddy ulcers. And, you know, and he was just going on this tyrant about Uncle Chet where I couldn't even talk to him about what was going on. And so I tried to reason, saying, they've healed that, they've let go. That was 35 years ago, 35 years ago. And, but he was stuck there. It was frozen. That was, was happening when he left. And so he was resenting Uncle Chet for something that appeared that had happened to my dad. And so each time I would call him, my mom kept going to the hospital like every two weeks, every month. And it would be the same conversation, and I'd have to keep trying to explain to him that it's not that way, that it's not that way. And I couldn't even talk to him about what I needed to talk about. And so um, I got off the phone one time, and uh, John says, I have never seen you like this in 19 years. My face was red, I was itching, I was crying, I was grunting, I was just like so <laughs> exasperated and, and just trying to talk to somebody who went and listened, who was stuck, and tried to do a little counseling, you know, just, <laughs> and he says, maybe you have some brother issues. <laughs> And, and I, he said, what's your service on? <laughs> we don't like to hear that. <laughs> Resentment. <laughs> so finally, um, after another phone call, this was going on for a month, I said, you know, Uncle Shet has Alzheimer's. And he has a bad back, and each of his seven kids have been bringing him and my mother dinner every night because mom can't walk. Oh, I didn't know that. No one told me Uncle Chet had Alzheimer's. Well, no. How long has it been going on? Then he was concerned about Uncle Chet. Well, nobody told me. Is he okay? And then he was able to shift, and we could go on and talk about how we were going to care for our mom. And so we, have, we might think we have these ill will about people, but when something really happens, we don't really want anything to happen to one of our brothers or sisters or a stranger, do we? 
we might think we do, but in reality, that touches our heart. We got out of our head and we get back in our heart. And then, then we could move forward. So, so then I had to do my work. And I had to think about, um, you know, what I felt about my brother. So I did a little meditation. And um, I never really wished any ill will against my brother. It was just a, it didn't matter. A kind of a dishonoring energy. Yeah. <coughs> so I saw in my meditation that I was the little sister. You know, he was 10 years older than me. And always wanted to be around the big brother. And, you know, I was a tomboy, so I played basketball. And tried to keep up with, you know, him and his friends. And wanted to go to games. And, you know, because he was cool. And so, um, then he left, and then he never communicated. He never, he, he didn't really communicate with my parents either, but at the time, I didn't, he had a little girl that he really didn't communicate with either. And it's just like, I was left. I felt uh, offended that I had no value as a little sister. And so, when I was feeling this, what happened, but I started getting red and itchy, and, you know, just as you started feeling it again, and I had no idea that that's what that was, you see? So the energy is real that's stuck in our body. It creates that physical um, manifestation. So it wasn't in the forefront of my mind, and so we harbor these little hurts, and we bury them but everything vibrates and then we don't even realize that there's something sending out a dishonoring energy. So I really wasn't wishing him ill will, but I wasn't sending him my unique share of love either. So, and then that opened the floodgates to all the other things. I went like this too. <laughs> and I went, hmm, because I think when I go like that, that means I'm over it and it doesn't matter anymore. So that cat paw, that cat paw pushing away, is creating that distance with a little dig. Distance with a little dig. So we have to think, what energy are we sending out? Because we know what we send out comes back to us, yes? Yes. Um, and think about the energy that we send to ourselves. How much resentment do we have toward ourselves? Do we express indignant displeasure with ourselves? Do we say, I can't believe I did that, I am so stupid? <laughs> so we, do we attack our own value? <clears throat> so when we, we devalue our own energy, which then allows others to devalue or seem to devalue our energy. Free. Now, as metaphysicians, we're always working on ourselves. <clears throat> we watch our words and our judgment, our, trying to watch our judgments. And <clears throat> when we work on releasing our judgments and our limiting beliefs about ourselves, because they are untrue, aren't they? Everything we think about ourselves that's limited is untrue. It's false. It's not the truth of who we are. And if we're not in our higher selves, most likely that perception is skewed, limited, or wrong when we are dealing with another and we feel an infraction has been occurred to us. Agree? Yes. So then we can agree that our perception can be wrong. So was Daryl's perception that Uncle Chet was a bad guy because he wanted to make money wrong? Yes. He's not bad. Was my perception of myself that I wasn't a good enough little sister wrong? Yes. I was a great little sister. That was fun. That was cool. <laughs> so let's just think for a minute. Everybody agree. Let's just think, we might have resentments toward a spouse for 
um, maybe not letting us express ourselves or say what we need to say. We might have a resentment towards our boss because maybe we think he treats us unfairly and doesn't honor the work that we do. We may have resentment towards the government for spending money on programs we might not think are worthy. We may have resentment towards a religion maybe that we grew up with that for some reason feel that maybe they made us feel bad. <laughs> I didn't know that was fun. <laughs> so how many, how have we harbored all this ill will? Can you think of all the things that we might have um, had energy against at one time and maybe now we went, eh, it doesn't matter anymore. But just think about all that energy that we're putting on a power outside of ourselves. All that energy is going, our life force is going to maintain that justification in holding on to my resentment. And so that can be exhausting, don't you think? <clears throat> so here's a, a common resentment that metaphysicians have. Why do I have to keep doing all the work just so I so others can be who they are. <laughs> Why can't they change and leave me alone? <laughs> it just seems unfair that if David's bothering me, I have to do the work. It doesn't, it doesn't seem fair, does it? Is that true? <laughs> so, that inner work is so important because we have to bring our energy back and pull our energy, look at what we, we're sending out. When, if you look at your body and imagine your body as being light, and now think of all those little resentments that you have, and it's all those pockets of cool energy that are blocking your light going out into the world. It's blocking all that good going out into the world. <clears throat> So it's important for us to shift and move from that space of ill will or dishonoring energy into a space of goodwill. Because do you know what the opposite of resentment is? Goodwill. Goodwill. So in the Aquarian, we talked about... Uh, when uh, Mary and Elizabeth went to <coughs> Egypt, and they were taught by El Elihu and Salome. And uh, Salome's talking about prayer. Prayer is the ardent wish that every way of life be light, that every act be crowned with good, that every living thing be prospered by our ministry. The fount of prayer is in the heart. By thought, not word, the heart is carried up to God, where it is blessed. Let us pray. So if we could return to a prayerful state, return to a prayerful state, and in our prayers, you know, we pray, we normally pray, God, I want this, I want that, God, help me with this. If we just went into prayer and say, I want good for all. I am wanting good, sent light for the good of the whole, that everyone be blessed, because aren't we part of the whole? And that energy that we, that cool energy that we are sending out, that's hurting that person or situation, but it's also hurting <coughs> us. So... We need to get back in feeling the oneness with our brothers and sisters. So, how can we shift? How can we release this? Are you guys ready to release this? Sure. Okay. You guys all felt some resistance? I mean, resentment? <laughs> Alright, so, the first question, I would say that you go into prayer. And be in that space of, I desire good all of life, because I am one with all of life. 
And when you can really feel that, ask, what can I see differently about the situation or person? Two, can I let go of my perception, admit that I may have been wrong? And it's okay to be wrong. If my limiting beliefs about myself are untrue, certainly my limiting beliefs about my brother are untrue. Number three, how can I value myself more? How can I value myself more? And number four, ask for good to flow to the situation or person. Okay, does that sound easy? Okay, this will get the energy moving in the body. So, you know, and when I did that, I realized that my brother is emotionally incapable of having connections and that it wasn't my fault. You know, you're going to get realizations, but it's, it's we want to replace that cold energy with that good of all energy. Goodwill, I wish good for you. You don't have to be in my life, but I wish good for you. That doesn't mean we still have to be with that person, but I wish good for you on your path. Do you see the difference? All right. And I would suggest that you do that for yourself. You could go in and say, what can I see differently about myself? Can I let go of a perception about myself? How can I value myself more? And ask for good to flow to you. Do you see how that works for you? Because you're part of the whole. So uh, when I was preparing for this, I divine dipped in Jesus Teacher Healer, which I love. And I thought, wow, that's pretty appropriate. So I thought I'd read it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love of oneself is important, but this does not mean selfishness. It means kindness to yourself because you are God's child. Do not give yourself more attention than you need, but take care of yourself and do not continually slay the God within you. Give opportunities in your daily life for the Christ within to manifest itself. This is what we mean by loving yourself. And this is what the Christ meant by, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, peace of mind. Love, doing the right thing. Love, living in according to divine law, which is the law of love and purity. Love thy neighbor and love thyself. Do good to your own soul, not by thinking unduly about yourself, but abiding by wise laws of right living, right eating, right thinking. Create as far as you can pure right conditions in your home and surroundings, in your relationships. Try to understand the trials and the difficulties in another person's life, which may have made them act hurtfully. Turn away wrath by gentleness and love. Remembering that as you feel hurt and irritated, so may your companion feel hurt, feel too. Until you can dispassionately feel with the feeling of your companion, you will not understand the life of a master soul. The master soul is a gentle soul, the wise, loving, compassionate soul, patient in adversity, who never loses faith in God and the angels who minister. This, my friends, is the meaning of that one meant. You see how it comes right into your everyday human relationship. You cannot do it all at once, we know. But beloved friends, make a good try. And you will raise yourself, and you will raise all human beings. Did you love that? Okay. So do you want to go within and try and anchor this into your consciousness to release. Just breathe. And once again, I ask that you feel God's love, this light just pouring over you. <clears throat> Feeling the love of the Father. 
our Father, Mother, God. Feel how safe you are held in this light. And just breathe that light. And I ask that Jesus the Christ come and stand with you. And now just picture yourself. Look at your energy. Look and see if you can see your energy body where there might be any coolness instead of a vibrating light. And just allow light to move through your body still. And ask yourself, what can I see differently about this situation that is creating this disharmony, this coolness? And it doesn't have to make sense. Just see with the eyes of today and with spirit. And ask yourself if you can let go of those perceptions that you was once held so many years ago, or maybe it was just yesterday. I'm willing to be wrong, to allow energy to flow, to restore my body, my energy, my health, my world into harmony and balance. And now ask, how can I value myself more? You might get a feeling, you might get words. You might just have to open up greater and allow God's love to flow through you more. And maybe something very simple. Now ask good to flow to that person or situation in which you might have been housing any ill will or dishonoring energy, anyone that you felt had been unfair to you. And just imagine that light, all those holes in your field, all that cool energy being transmuted into light. That wishing of good for your brother man, for yourself, that good that goes out into your world creating that wonderful world, creating that world of light and flow. My desire is that we all be in flow and harmony with our own spirit, with our own life, their own creations and with each other. And just allow that good to flow with no attachment. And just notice how you feel. And just take a deep breath. Knowing that you can touch this energy. Being in your prayerful state asking for the good of all concerned, asking for light for all, is putting you back in balance and harmony with all of life in which you're a part of. And just take a deep breath. And allow your energy to flow and expand. And when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. Do you guys feel? So as you go through your week, remember to align your will with God's will, creating a space for resolution, to stay on your path and claim what you want for yourself, and value yourself and value the energy of one another by wishing goodwill to everyone. So in the words of the angels, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill, pleasure. Mm -hmm.